everyone. Welcome to my accounting short number five. Um, so in this short, we are going to do going concern concept. So that was the accounting concept and convention, uh, which I couldn't do on um, in my previous short. So we are going to cover going concern concept. Then we are going to talk about accounting equation. And finally, we will conclude this short with the users of accounts. So who are the people who will be interested in looking at the accounts? Uh, we will conclude this session with that. Uh, I've got a very small example of accounting equation as well, so that I can show you how it works in real life. And obviously, as always, if you have got any questions, you can put them as your comments. So we'll start. I'm going to share my screen now. So as I said, going concern concept, now, going concern concept basically means that you are going to prepare your financial statements with an assumption that the business will continue its operations for the foreseeable future, unless there is an evidence against it. So when, when we say foreseeable future, foreseeable future could be 10 years, could be 20 years. Nobody can define foreseeable future but it's not forever, it's foreseeable future which you can foresee. So unless you have got evidences that the business is gonna shut down in the near future, you have to carry on with the assumption that it will continue operations for the foreseeable future. And basically the assumption is that there is no intention or there is no need to sell the non-current assets of the business. That's the continuation of operations means. So that's your going concern concept. Now let's talk about accounting equation. Now at any particular point of time, at any date, this accounting equation should hold true, which is assets are always equal to your liabilities and capital. So if you apply logic, any assets which the business owns, that's always equal to its liability. So either you get the money, um, like you borrow the money, so that's your liability, or it's your own money, which is capital. So whatever assets you buy, you at either get that money through a loan, which is a liability, or it's your own money, which is the capital, or known as equity if it's a company. So that's your accounting equation. Assets should always be equal to liabilities plus capital, uh, and that's because of double entry bookkeeping. For each and every transaction, there are two entries in your books of accounts. So for each and every debit, there is equal and opposite or corresponding credit. Assets are always equal to liabilities plus capital. Or if you try to move the equation around, Assets minus liabilities is equal to capital. That's the money which the owner has invested in the business. I've got a small example for you. So I've got few transactions which I'm going to take you through. So transaction number one, Mr. A started a business as a retailer and invested 10,000 as capital. So when you start a business and you invest your capital, obviously the other side of accounting equation, which is liabilities plus capital, your capital is going up by 10,000 and you are investing cash in the business. So your assets, which is cash or bank will go up by 10,000 as well. So bank will be 10,000, capital will be 10,000, liability will be zero because you haven't borrowed the money from anywhere. So accounting equation will be Assets is equal to capital plus liability. Assets, you have bank and you have capital of 10,000, liability of zero. So everything is perfect. Your accounting equation worked. Let's look at the second transaction. Mr. A applied for a bank loan of 20,000 pounds and got it approved and received the money. Now, when you apply for a bank loan and when you receive the money, it's a liability. So now that means liability will go up by 20,000. When you receive the money, your bank account will go up by 20,000, meaning your bank had 10,000 before from capital, and now you have 20,000 extra. So in total in your bank account, you should have 30,000 pounds. Your capital is still 10,000. 
it's not going to change because of this transaction. But now you have a liability, which is a loan of 20,000. So your accounting equation will read now as bank is 30,000, capital 10,000 and liability is 20,000. So if you do the total, 30,000 is equal to 30,000. It's true, that means, oh sorry, it's equal. That means we have done all the transactions perfectly. Next transaction, he purchased goods worth 5,000 pounds to resell, payment as follows. So he paid 2,000 pounds in cash. When you pay in cash, your bank account will go down, right? Your bank account will go down and you are buying goods. So that means your inventory is going up. Your stock is going up. That means the other side of your equation will be unaffected. Bank will go down by 2000 and your inventory will go up by 2000. So equation will remain unaffected. Then 3000 you bought on credit, the payment to be made in 30 days time. Now, when you buy goods on credit, your cash remains unaffected, but you are buying goods. That means you have got now inventory in business. You had 2,000 before, and now you have 3,000 more. So your total inventory is 5,000 now, but you are buying this on credit. That means your liability will go up by 3,000. So your bank will be 30,000 minus 2,000 for cash. It's only 28,000 now. Your capital is still 10,000. Your liability was 20,000 loan from before. And now you have got 3,000 pounds of trade creditors. And if you remember, trade creditors are the suppliers from whom you have bought goods on credit. So accounting equation, uh, you have bank and inventory. So bank is 28,000, inventory is 5,000, making it a total of 33,000. And then on the other side, you have got capital of 10,000. You have got liability, you have got two, loan of 20,000 and trade creditors of 3,000. If you add all of them up, it makes it a total of 33,000 as well. So that means equation balanced. You can try many more examples. And if you have got any doubts, please ask me in comments. But I thought I'll do few with you. The next thing which I wanted to discuss with you are the potential users of financial statements and what are their needs. So these are the people who might be using or will be using your financial statements. So obviously the owners of the business, lenders, lenders might be banks or it could be private individuals. So people who will lend the money, who will loan the money to you. Your customers might be interested in your financial statements, managers of the business, your competitors will obviously be interested in your financial statements. Uh, analysts will be interested in your financial statements. As customers are interested, suppliers will be interested too. Obviously, their interests will be different, but they are interested parties as well. And your employees would like to see your financial statements as well. And there are a few more interested parties because that diagram was becoming uh, too much complicated. So I wrote some here. Uh, government will be interested which will include local authorities as well. HMRC will be interested, obviously, for tax purposes in UK. Uh, in other countries, you, you will be having your own tax authorities. They will be interested to see your financial statements. You have investors or potential investors. Investors are the people who would like to invest money in your business or who have already invested money in your business. And potential investors are the people who would like to invest money in your business. Credit rating agencies like in UK, they will be interested to know your financial statements um, so that they can uh, give you proper rating. Local community, of course, for all the obvious reasons will be interested and journalists as well. So these are some of the interested parties, uh, which is also known as a stakeholder. Now remember shareholder and stakeholders, they are different terminologies. Stakeholders are the people who have stake in the business, who have got interest in the business. Shareholders are the people who have invested in the shares of the company. We will do these terms when we, when we will be doing company. So we will hold on to that for now. Now I've got this slide here uh, in which I have listed their uses, why they would like to use the financial statements. So now you, you think about present investors. 
they would like to know if they have got capital gain in their investment. Now, capital gain basically means how the share prices are going up. Now, suppose you buy a share of a particular company for 10p. So 10p a share you bought, you paid the price, and now your share price is 90p. So that is the capital gain for you, 80p. Your share price have gone up. So as an investor, I will be very much interested to know if I have got any capital gain through the share investment in a particular company. And I would also like to know if I'm gonna get any dividends. So dividends are basically the share in the profits of the company. So if the company makes profit, they normally declare the dividend. There is no right of the shareholders to get the dividend, but directors will normally declare the dividend if the company is making profits. So as an investor, I would like to see those two things. Any new investor would like to see your financial statements because they would like to decide whether they should buy the shares in your business or they shouldn't buy. So they have to make that decision. That's why they're interested in financial statements. Banks, I'm assuming bank as a lender. So if you go to the bank to ask for the loan, uh, they are very much interested to know if you are able uh, to pay the interest on loan, which is known as servicing the debt. And they would like to know if they will get their money back on time as well, which is the capital repayment. So interest payments and capital repayment on a timely basis, that is the interest of the bank in the financial statements. When it comes to employees, employees always want competitive wages and they want the job security as well. So if a particular business is doing very good as per their financial statements, they will ensure that they pay competitive wages to their employees so that they keep the employees happy and low turnover, labor turnover. And that provides the job security as well because that means they are not going to shut down in near future. So employees are interested in that. Management. Now management will be interested to know the financial statements, obviously because they are managing the business. So they would like to see the financial statement so that they can take the remedial action uh, for any weak areas. So if there is anything which needs their attention, they can find it out. Plus, um, managers get bonuses if they meet their targets. Uh, so they're interested to see the financial statements to see if they are meeting their targets for their bonus purposes. And obviously you can say for employees and management for the promotion purposes as well. Next comes to suppliers. Now suppliers are the people who supply the goods or services to the business. And obviously their business depends upon your business. So they are interested to know in the, they are interested to know the continuity of the business. So the security. So if your business will continue, their business will keep on continuing as well. So they are, they are interested to know if you are going to continue. Plus, because they are providing you the goods on credit, they would like to know if you have the ability actually to pay back that money to them. So ability to pay the credit. That's the supplier's interest. When it comes to customers, they want a the good value for money. They are interested in the products of your company, but they want good value for money. And uh, they are also interested in the continuity of the business because uh, if they have bought a product with, for example, 10 years warranty, but if your business closed down in two years, that means they have lost their eight years of warranty period. So customers are interested to know if you have got the ability to cover the warranty obligations. Then you have competitors. Competitors, um, they are interested in the business because they would like to know how they can obtain a competitive advantage over your business. So they want to make their business better than your business. So if they know how your business is performing through your financial statements, they can actually find out the ways to obtain that financial advantage or competitive advantage over your business. When you talk about government, I'm including tax authorities here. Obviously, they are interested to know if you are paying your taxes timely and the correct amount. They are also interested to know if you are complying with all the laws and regulations. And they're also interested 
in your business for employment purposes. Because it's the government's responsibility to make sure that they have the good level of employment in the country. So they will be interested to know if you are doing your bits and pieces in providing that employment, for example, employment to the local, uh, local people. So you are not getting people from like foreign land. Uh, you employ local people if there are skills available. So government will be interested in all those things as well. And it's not only foreign land. Um, employment for local people is very, very important for some, like for example, rural areas. So where people cannot travel to and from work to the other areas. So if you're setting up a business there, government is very much interested to make sure that you provide employment to those people. Regulators and auditors, they're interested in your business for compliance purposes. So as we said in our first video, that you will need to get your accounts audited, especially the financial accounts. So they are interested in the compliance that you are complying with all the rules and regulations. And finally, general public. General public is interested in your business to see the environmental impact of your business. So if your business is creating a lot of pollution or if you are dumping a lot of waste in, uh, for example, Thames River or Ganges River in India, general public will be interested. They're also interested for employment purposes. As I said before, employment for local people. So general public will be interested for that as well. And that's it for today. Uh, in my next video, I will do um, the types of business organizations and we will do the features of each and every business organization uh, before we start doing actually the numerical aspects. Thank you.